do it. I'm Robert Adams from the Green Team. I'll be talking to you today about the frequency response modeling for the aerator, aerator system in Chattanooga, Tennessee. First, I'll begin with telling you about the aerator mixing station background and previous work. And then I'll tell you the theory behind the time response analysis. The results, in the, the results analysis of the time response graphs and voting plots. And I'll tell you a little bit about the modeling approach that we took. And I'll show you the experimental and appropriate and approximate modeling comparisons and results. And then I'll show you the conclusions drawn from the experiment. For the background, the mixer is, a vari is variable speed and is controlled by a feedback control system involving a speed transmitter, controller, and actuator. Below is the block diagram for our system where the input is motor power percent and the output is the drive speed in RPMs. This is stage state operating curve for all three input regions of our system, lower, middle, and upper. This is the sample step response graph for the lower region between 10% and 40%, with the dead time of 0.11 seconds, the gain of 17.52 RPM, RPM per percent, and a time constant of 0.23 seconds. And this is the step response model for the same region. It's been zoomed in to show where it's interesting. And the gain came out to be 17.2 RPM per percent. The dead time was 0.1 seconds. And the time constant was 0.23 seconds. These are the step response results for the model that I just showed you. The gains does, don't deviate very much. Uh, they're right around 17.4. The dead time is much higher from the, or much longer, I should say, for the first two regions. And for the upper region, it's uh, a lot shorter dead time. For the four, first order time constant, they vary greatly between the lower and the uppers. Uh, they're going anywhere from 0.15 to 0.23. And now I'll tell you about the theory of the experiment. The experiment was to observe the time response output for a sine function input at various frequencies. This was done by determining the amplitude ratio and phase angle for each frequency graphically. After that, there was a Bode plot that was constructed so that you could determine the gain order ultimate frequency, and ultimate gain of the controller. This is a sample of the time response graph. This is for the upper region. And as you can see, the amplitude of the input is delta M. The amplitude of the output is delta C. The phase shift is calculated by T. And the time period is the T in red for the output and the T in blue for the input. And with this, you could determine the amplitude ratio of 12.1 and a phase angle of 51.3 degrees. This is the Bode plot for the lower region. It has a gain of 17 RPM per percent, an order of 1.5, an ultimate frequency of 1.8 hertz and an ultimate gain of the controller of 0.15% per RPM. And this is determined by the frequency is, the, the ultimate frequency is the frequency at which the uh, phase angle is 180 degrees and the ultimate gain of the controller is where the Bode plot is where the 
amplitude ratio crosses the ultimate frequency. And those are the two slopes that best fit the higher frequencies of the Bode plot. And the gain is the asymptote for the top section of the Bode. And this is for the middle region with the gain of 18, an uh, order of 1.5, the ultimate frequency of 2.4 hertz, and the uh, ultimate gain of the controller at 0.25. And here's the upper with the uh, 18 RPM percent gain, an order of 2, which is different from the first two, uh, an ultimate frequency of 2.2 hertz, and the ultimate gain of the controller at 0.32. And for our modeling approach, we used a first order plus dead time input function that's shown up there, A sine of 2 pi Ft, with the um, Bode equations for the amplitude ratio and the phase angle that's shown here. And this is the Bode model with the experimental data for the upper region and the model curve for all three regions and they do not deviate at all. Um, they're very close. For a summary, this is the experimental gain, which is lower in the for the lower region than the middle and the upper with 17.4 for the lower and 17.75 for the upper and the middle. The order is 1.5 for the lower and middle and 2 for the upper. The ultimate frequencies, it was higher for the middle region at 2.4 and the lowest in the lower region which was 1.5. The ultimate gain of the controller seems to increase steadily with the percent input. Um, the lower region was at 0.15 and it went all the way up to the upper region which was 0.33. This is the model gain. There was no deviation. It was 17.75. The dead time was much greater for the first region than the middle and the upper regions. It was 0.25 in the lower region and 0.22 or 0.21 for the middle region. The time constant was significantly lower for the lower region and 0.23 for the middle and upper region, which is what we're used to seeing. And this is a comparison between the frequency response and the step response models. Um, there's a very big difference between each one of them. And you can see that the left side of each bar for the lower, middle, and upper region is 17.75 from the frequency response. And the lower, or the, the step response model gave us anywhere from 17.3 down to, or 17.45 down to 17.4. This is the dead time comparison, which you see pretty much the same thing. They're all a little higher. And the time constant. The time constant was a lot closer than any of the other two parameters. And in the upper region, it's the exact same at 0.237. And 